Where's your brother? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I'm on a plane right now. By the way, the other brothers over there, they put him up to it. MashaAllah. He's the brave one. Uh, inshallah, he, he should be landing by 6 a.m. tomorrow. So he'll be here, inshallah, and the rest of the tour with us. Uh, he's a part of it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Hulipa Vlogs. And today we are here in the masjid, Muslim Chamberlain Masjid, uh, their beliefs. Salafi Masjid, no problem, but we're here for the speaker, Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq. Alhamdulillah, wa salat wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa sallam a taslim a kathir ha amma ba'd Go off and then you watch out and you see somebody shot And it's not like the movies that can have like little hole goes and a little bit of blood drips out, you know an actual bullet, you know, there's an entry hole, but the exit hole usually, depending on the type of bullet, is huge. Like, one of my friends got shot in the head, it took his whole side of the brain off. You know? Like, the whole head was off. So then you start to realize that, that life is not just a joke, and death is not a joke. And you realize that there has to be more to it. There has to be purpose. And then you go back to the Qur'an, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ayah that I recited in the beginning. He promises in us. He gives us a promise that every soul shall taste death. Every soul, kullu nafsin, maut, shall taste death. Now, if the ayah had stopped here, and this ayah is repeated in the Quran, then it would be one thing. But here, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and tells us, Thumma, and then after that, Ilayna, back to us, Tarjaun, you will come back. So death is not the end. You know, people say, well, you know, whatever, I'm sick of this disease, I just want to die for it can be over. Well, but it's not over. There is the real life that begins after death. And this is what you have to be aware of. Because you get caught up in life, you know, you get caught up in money, you get caught up in drugs, you get caught up in fame, you get caught up in popularity, you get caught up in clothes, you get caught up in TV and TikTok and shorts and reels and this, Instagram and Snapchat, and sometimes you forget how valuable time is and how important this time that Allah has given us is and how dangerous wasting this opportunity is. And SubhanAllah, I was I mean, uh, involved in stuff myself. Some of you may have seen my backstory, some of you may not have. Um, but I, I used to live in the UK actually when I was little. Uh, I used to live, when I was like six years old, I was here in Manchester. London and here and there. And, um, when I went to the US, I was very young. I was like eight, nine, something like that, uh, elementary school. And I walked into school uh, in, in a very bad neighborhood. I mean, by bad, I don't mean like like UK bad. I mean like drive-bys and you know shootouts at middle schools bad. You know, and and I walked in with a suit. You know, so. Because my mother thought, you know, it's America, everybody's rich and everybody's nice. And I walked down and said, like, hello, my name is Usman, how are you? <laughs> and needless to say, that didn't go over well. <laughs> I got beat up pretty bad that day. <laughs> and you learned a lesson. You have to fight. And, you know, 
Subhanallah, at that time, I didn't know any Muslims growing up. I had no Muslim friends. My uh, parents were divorced. My mother worked two jobs. May Allah reward her and bless her. She was working hard to provide. But basically, I was on my own. You know, you would get up in the morning and take a bus to school, and when you came home, there'd be nobody home, and you know, whatever, make a sandwich. And that's the kind of life you know that that America had. That's that's that Western life. And when I was 12, yeah, about 12 years old, I had a friend, and this friend of mine, his name was Wahik, he was Iranian. Uh, he wasn't Muslim, but he was Middle Eastern, Iranian, so you know, we became friends. And he, he got into a, he used to like to pick fights, he was like one of those troublemakers. I didn't like picking fights, I was like a nice guy. Um, and he, he got into a fight with these three guys, and I had this loyalty idea, so I jumped in for him. At this is the age of 12, you know, so I jumped in to fight for him. He runs away, I get beat up. <laughs> so, subhanAllah, my father, uh, may Allah have mercy on him, he passed away. He, uh, he didn't live with us, so he, he came to see me, and he, uh, you know, my mom was worried, you know, I have a big old black eye and all that kind of stuff, you know. And my father, I remember until today, he, he pulled me in the room, he was like, I'll talk to him, like as if it's going to be like this mature conversation. And then he just told me, did you run? I said, no. He said, did you cry? I said, no. He said, okay, nothing else to worry about. That's all the advice. <laughs> and then he was like, can you recognize them? I was like, yeah. He's like, let's go. So he got a bat, and he had his Camaro at the time, his car, and we started going looking for them. And we found them. And the gangs who always had, they would be posted up, they had their own places. And he jumped out, and my father, mashallah, you know, he was strong, he took a bat, he cracked one guy's head, broke the other guy's shoulder, shattered it. Uh, you know, we got him back. But then he drove off <laughs> to his house, and I had to go to school the next day. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're 12 years old, and you got a gang that's like 500 people. Now, again, our gangs are not like 10 people. You, know? you look at Sureños, you look at MS-13 or 18th Street, these are gangs with like thousands of members. So the next day in school basically was like, look, you're, you're gonna die. Uh, you know, those guys aren't gonna let it go and you're alone. So at the age of 12, I joined the gang and actually joined, not, I didn't hang out with the gang, I didn't, you know, I joined the gang. And subhanAllah, uh, it, it, was, it was rough, you know, it was a very tough time. You had, you know, regularly people get hit in the head with crowbars and teeth busted open, baseball bats the head, you, uh, I mean myself, I got hit with golf clubs, you can see cuts on the side of my head, hair still. You know, it was, it was rough times, but that's the only life we knew. You know, it was not that we were trying to be cool, it's not that we wanted to be rappers, it's not that we watched a video, that was the world that we had to survive in. And, you know, the first time one of my friends got shot and killed, I was 14. You know, imagine you're 14 years old and, you know, your friend gets shot dead and you're at a funeral for a 15 year old you know? and and then you you kind of kind of hits you that this is real and then you know that's how it goes you do you do revenge you shoot back they shoot you you shoot back and it would go back and forth uh, subhanallah there was a guy uh the funny thing is you'll see him actually in our videos now his name is richard and uh, he used to be from an enemy gang called SEK, Southeast Kings. We were from the east side, he was from the southeast war. And I he used to write these stories, these stories from SEK. And I remember that one time we pulled up on him, um, it was a gang fight, and you know they were in our territory and all that, and I remember him very well. And I took a, I took a crowbar and I hit him in the head, I cracked his head. 
And it was over, you know. We, we actually kidnapped one of their guys at that time, guess score. And uh, many, many years later, kind of skipping ahead here, many years later, he comes to our Dawah table. Now, I'm talking about like 20 years later. I mean, I know I don't look that old, but you know, it's, it's quite a while later, right? So I didn't recognize him. I'm a kind of busy person, so. But he recognized me, I don't know how. And, but he didn't remind me who he is. Like, he just started asking me about Islam. And the video is on our channel, on One Message Foundation, you see the channel. So he came, he asked about Islam one time, he didn't become Muslim. Then he came back and he talked, and alhamdulillah, he ended up becoming Muslim. The video is online. And now, this whole time, I do not know that he's that guy. And, but he knows who I am, right? So he's talking to me, he's learning with us, he comes to the durus, we have a fiqh dars, he sits in it, we have a aqidah dars, he's in it, we have a seerah dars, he's in it, he's involved in da'wah, he's giving da'wah. One time we go down to Mexico for da'wah, my sons were with me and all that, you know, and we're talking, and he's like, uh, yeah, remember when you hit me in the head with a crowbar? I hit you in the head of the crow, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, remember, you know, when you were young and this, and I'm least from SEK, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and I felt bad for him, but, but that's the crazy thing about life. You know, like, like from a time that we were trying to kill each other, to a time where now he's my brother in Islam giving da'wah next to me. And you'll see, alhamdulillah, he's still there, he's joining us in the da'wah, you'll see him with his big beard, and mashallah, Allahumma barik. And he, and, and he went through a lot of hardship. When he became Muslim, you know, his whole family turned on him. Uh, he was very strong Christian, evangelical. So when he became Muslim, his family, like, stopped talking to him. And he himself tells, you know, you'll see the videos where he talks about it, his pastor, his uh, preacher, the Christian, they, he looked in the congregation and he was like, where is Richard? And they're like, oh, he went, you know, to meet some guy named Uthman at a park and became Muslim. And this guy became enraged, he became upset. So what he did is, he said, I'm going to go to Baboa Park and I'm going to debate this Muslim guy and we're going to prove him wrong, we're going to bring Richard back. And the video's online. Uh, uh, there's a car blocking the car park. How did the Sheikh choose who? So, if a Christian comes up to you and says, um, that, "Okay, Jesus died for our sins and he's the flesh and all this, this, that, and he's son of God," how would you answer him? How do you give an answer to that? There's a lot of videos you need to watch. <laughs> um, if a Christian comes and says that Jesus died for our sins, first thing is that doesn't make any sense. Like, like, think about it, like, just be real, right? What's your name? Abid. 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 Um, in the UK, I don't live here, so I'm going to ask you. If you go to a judge, right, and you say, look, all these people here, sorry, but I'm just giving an example, right? They're murderers. They killed people. They stabbed them, right? They wetted them, right? And these people, they're, they're bandits. They rob people. They steal. They break into your house. And those guys steal cars, right? And this Sheikh, mashallah, he's a great guy. He's studied Sharia. He memorized Quran. He doesn't break any laws. So we're going to kill him so you can let all these people go. Does that make any sense to you? Would any court accept that? If some judge did that, they killed the Sheikh. Allah you. Right? right? And let all these criminals go, would you think he's just? So how does that make any sense? Right? If they say he's God in the flesh, right? But what does that mean? Does God know everything? Yes. You're sure of that or you're not sure? Yeah, yeah, he's, he does everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even a Christian would agree, right? Yeah. So did Jesus know the hour? No, he never knew it. Did he know if there was fruit on the fig tree? Yeah. So how can Jesus not know and be God? You can't be a square circle. Yeah. Right? They could say maybe he wasn't God at that time. Like, okay, so then he wasn't God. But then the Christian doctrine is that he was fully God on mm. earth. So if he was fully God, how could he not know? Mm. Okay, does God worship somebody else? No. So when Jesus worshipped God, 